Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Hello everyone, I'm Eris McMillan McCall. I am founder and CEO of Project One Voice and the host of Project One Voice Live. We are here at Town Hall. We are celebrating the legacy and leadership of black male identifying creatives in the arts. It is a photo shoot that we're doing that will be posted on February 20th, which is Sydney Portier's birthday. On this day, we're, we're celebrating the legacy and leadership of black males in the arts. Um, the photo shoot is going to be done here today, and it's going to be historic. You have some incredible human beings here, incredible theater makers, art makers will be here, and it's just going to be fantastic. Happy birthday, Sydney Poitier! So we are here with this extraordinary bevy of black creatives, and we're here celebrating their legacy and their leadership. Um, let's just talk to a few of them right now. And sir, what is your name? <laughs> Stanley Wayne Mathis. And your name, sir? Zane Mark. Would you pass this down? Leonard Joseph. Sonny Dunnigan. Jonathan McCory. Tyrone Mitchell Henderson. Eric Lockley. Bill Johnson. Norman Bush. Douglas Powell Ward. Nice. <laughs> I'm Lance Roberts. Darius Tahas. James T. Lane. Taryn Carter. Spencer Means. Robert H. Fowler. Charles Holt. Horace Turnbull. Darius Damazi Williams. Robert Garland. Anthony Wayne. Alan H. Green. Obadiah Wright. Lacey Darrell Phillips, AKA the Uncle Earl. Yeah. <laughs> Ruben Santiago Hudson. George ah. <laughs> and George Faber. <laughs> hey, fellas. <laughs> Hey, Ruben. As well. Um, so, again, as I told you, it's, it, we just want to celebrate all the important work that all of you do in the field every single day. Um, one of the things I've been talking a lot about is um, in our lives as, as, as black people, as black creatives, um, we deal with a lot of trauma and joy every single day of our lives, and a lot more trauma than joy. So what we want to do is we want to bring some joy to all of our lives. So this is what these moments are, the moments of togetherness. Project One Voice is always developed as a means, as a mechanism to bring us together, to celebrate what we bring to the table so wonderfully well every single day. So I want to remind each and every single one of you that you are never alone. And even though there are about 20 or 30 of you here, but also know this, this room is also filled with the legacy of ancestors who all paved the way for you to be here. Um, one of the most extraordinary things about February 20th is it's not only Sidney Poitier's birthday, it's my birthday as well, but it's also the day that his father, Douglas Turner Ward, died on my birthday. Oh. Mr. Ward and I became really, really good friends um, very late in life. And um, Charles Randolph Wright, yes, oh. yes. Um, but, but, but this, for me, is, is an homage to him and um, all the people that were paving the way from us, not even knowing that we were going to exist at any point in time. So um, I just got back from Charleston, South Carolina, which I don't know if you know this, but 90, uh, over, I think, 80, 60 percent of the, the enslaved people that came to this country came through the port of Charleston. So I began what I'm calling my emancipation tour in Charleston. So I shaved all of my head off, hair off. So Charleston has the oldest emancipation parade in the entire country. I think it started in, um, the Emancipation Proclamation was in 1863. I think they started theirs in 1864, 1865. So I went down there and it was so incredible to be immersed in that amazing culture, the Gullah culture, and to find out 
why that, that Gullah heritage still exists to this day. A lot had to do with the terrain, terrain of South Carolina. The, the, I'll make this very, very short, but what I was told by some of the Gullah descendants was this is what happened. The enslavers, um, because of the terrain of South Carol of, of Charleston, um, it's right near the water. There's swamps, there's alligators, there's, there are lizards, there's all, and mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, they call the, the state bird now. There's so many of them. <laughs> but they had two homes. They had a home close to the plantation, but they also had a home that was far away from all of those, um, those predators. So that allowed those enslaved people, those, those, those Gullah people, to maintain their history. Information down there. And it makes so much sense because they were able to isolate their history. And that's the reason why it has been maintained all these many, many decades, these many centuries. So it, I was looking at the connectivity between town hall and the black community. And when we started exploring this legacy, it's a very rich legacy. I don't know if you know that Marian Anderson did her first concert here. Kent Gash told me that his uncle um, performed his first recital here in this, this hall. You have a great relationship with um, Paul Robeson, so we can, we can go. Yes, there's so many people, so much, and, and, and again, I'm from Birmingham, I was born in 1963, I just found out recently that they had the New York service for the four little girls in this hall. This is where August Wilson and Robert Bluestein had their conversation. You see all this, you see all this connected tissue? We're doing an, an exciting reunion on February 27th of Uptown It's Hot. <laughs>